Good to see you all virtually and um, welcome you to the 23rd worship, virtual worship service of First Congregational Church, 23 weeks. And um, I, I wanted to take just a moment this morning to really say an earnest thank you for your patience as we're learning this technology and trying to get better and better at it. But even more than your patience, I want to thank you for your enthusiasm. I think if there's anything that's certainly coming through to me, and I think is coming through throughout the congregation, is that we have an enthusiasm for being together, for participating in worship, just smoothly going along as best we can during this, during this dreadful time of, of pandemic. And I'm reminded this morning, I was reminded of something that I, I don't know if this is original to Pastor Cheryl, but she's the person I first heard say the, um, that God is on every path. And I think all of us can know in our hearts that we have found God on this difficult path. And this morning, I wanted to, one of the things that's been so special um, about this path is that we are connecting and reconnecting through this virtual worship with so many people that don't live in Memphis. Some of those folks are new friends and some of those folks are old friends. And we have people here from Ohio and New Mexico. We have people here from Spain and Massachusetts, even California and New York. And what I wanna ask you to do just for fun, if you don't live in Memphis or if you're not in Memphis right this minute, use the chat and just let us know where you, where you are. So I, I save that chat every week. I pass that on to the pastors and it's fun for all of us to see where's everybody coming from on a given Sunday morning. So if you'll do that, it would be fun. I also wanna welcome the visitors, those of you that are new and we really urge you to let us know that you're here. You can also use the chat and say, I'm John Smith and I'm new to this service and um, people will welcome you right away. Um, but also feel free to connect with us. I, I think probably the best place for you to connect is to go to our website at www.firstcongo.com. It's very simple and everything is on there. You can connect with the church newsletter each week. You can let us, you can connect with the staff. You can let us know you'd like to be part of our email lists. Um, you can send your prayer requests to Pastor Sonia. That website will, will basically get you through to anything you need to with us. And we just welcome you that you're, that you're here with us this morning. Um, we are your announcements. If you happen to have one of the orders of worship, which comes through your newsletter email, um, I want you to check that for the announcements for this week. And I want you to know that this week I'm going to be working really hard on the calendar that's on our website that you can very quickly go through that and catch your announcements and I'll do my best to get that up to date. And with that said, I will say it's good we're here together. Gracious God, walk beside me through this day. Clear heavy air with the lightness of your presence. Guide my hands and steady my heart, that I may give comfort when I cannot give answers, that I may give relief when I do not have a cure, and that I may radiate your healing presence when the limits of science, time, the human body, and life circumstances overwhelm us all. Amen.
Thessalonians 1, 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of Thessalonians in God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering for our God your work of faith and labor, of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that you have been chosen, because our message of gospel came to you not in word only, but in the power and in but in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you revived, received, received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia for the word of God the Lord has sounded forth from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia but in every place your faith in God has become known known so we have no need to speak about it for the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turn God to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for God's son from heaven who has who was raised from the dead Jesus who rescues us from the wrath that is coming Good morning, Sammy. That was such a good job. I'm going to need you to come over and help teach my little girls how to read in a couple of years. You did such a great job. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope that you are well. I am going to talk to you a little bit about prayer this morning because that is the theme that uh, Pastor Cheryl is going to preach about to the big kids in just a few minutes. I have a favorite author and her name is Anne Lamott and she wrote a book that says that there are three essential prayers that we all need to pray on a regular basis, particularly when we are in a hard time. And I don't know about you, but I kind of feel like the last six months has been a little bit of a hard time. We haven't been able to be with our friends. We've kind of been stuck at home a lot. We have to wear these masks on our faces when we go out of the house. So I think it qualifies as a hard time. She says that the first prayer that we need to pray to God on a regular basis is help. And this is probably the prayer that we're all pretty good at praying on a regular basis, is asking God to help us when things aren't going well, when we're scared, when we're sad, when we need something. We're pretty good at asking, about, or asking God for help when we sit down to pray. The second prayer that she says we need to pray on a regular basis is thanks. Thank you, which she shortens to thanks. And this is a prayer that we lift up to God when we see God moving and acting in our lives. Usually when we've said a prayer of help and then we know that help is on the way and we can see that God is listening to us and answering us and is, is moving in our lives, that we need to lift up a prayer that says, thank you. Thank you for being a part of my life. And the third prayer that she says that we need to pray on a regular basis is probably the trickiest prayer. It's a prayer that just says, wow. It's a prayer for when we're speechless. 
And the only thing we can think to say is wow. And those are those moments where we just have a sense of, of God at work in the world. So when we go outside and we see a rainbow or we are with our family or our friends and we just have that feeling that we feel so good, we can feel love and all we can think to say is wow, that that's an occasion that we actually lift up a prayer to God that just says wow. So my challenge to you is that in this next week, you will lift up a prayer that says help when you feel like you need to ask God for some help, that you will lift up a prayer of thanks when you feel like God is present and working in your life, and that you will lift up a prayer that just says, wow, when you have one of those moments that's just so good that you'll say, God, wow just wow. And we're going to practice right now. We're going to say a quick prayer before we move on. So if you would pray with me, dear God, help, help us when we find ourselves in times where we don't know what to do and we're not feeling great. And we know that we need you to work in our lives. Thank you, God, for showing up when we call on you and wow wow that we are able to still have this loving community on a sunday morning even though we are all physically apart just wow this feels so good amen well i hope you all have a wonderful week and that you find your moment to pray help thanks and wow i'll see you all soon
It happens all the time. A friend, a neighbor, a family member shares the news of a very difficult situation. Somebody's just received a cancer diagnosis or a family member is threatened with eviction or, or a relationship is on the ropes or our parents have dementia. And we listen to them and we don't know what to say except that we wish their pain would go away. They know that we're helpless, but we still care. Pray for us, they often say. Or maybe we just offer, hold you all in prayer. And we mean it. But we especially mean it after we've made that promise. The challenge is how do we fulfill what we've agreed to do? What kind of prayer wraps around, lifts, helps heal a father's dimension or, or the grief of losing a child? What kind of prayer can we offer when life as we know it is just unraveling and there's no obvious solution? A few years back, Samuels Wells named a couple of our most typical prayer responses to this kind of very difficult chronic pain. He calls the first response the resurrection response. We call on the power of God to break the boundaries as we know them. A God who has the power to bring even the dead back to life. And so we pray, God, as you raise Jesus from the dead, restore our friend, Oscar or Sue or Bob. Give this friend stability of mind or strength of body, a restoration of the ability to communicate or to walk or to remember. Most of us want to pray this prayer when we see what seems to be an almost impossible deterioration for Alzheimer's or any one of a, a million medical conditions that seem not to reverse themselves through anything that medicine or science can offer. We know we need a miracle if the situation is going to change. And so the resurrection prayer is really a statement of what we want to see happen. We want our friend's life restored. We want to see their family members at peace. We want to see joy back in that household. We want to share our compassion. We want action. You know, there are a lot of evangelists on TV who promise that they can teach us the formula for using these resurrection prayers more effectively. Some of them tell us it's all in the wording. We need to make sure that we end the prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ or we need to use the words of the prayer of Jabez, or we need to use acrostics, the, the A-C-T-S method of prayer, or the P-R-A-Y formula for our prayer. Or else we need to have a lifestyle that brings God's ear closer to us, that makes God more willing to do what we ask. If we have enough faith, if we have enough virtue, the reasoning goes, God will certainly have to hear us and respond we trust hard enough, if we believe hard enough. But you know, that approach tends to make most of us nervous because we know that Alzheimer's, for example, tends to go only one way and towards one outcome. And we're not sure that the virtue of our prayer or our character can suddenly bring God's ear closer to the situation. We know that the damage from certain forms of can cancer or disease isn't going to be reversed. And we've seen hopes dashed too many times to offer up a, a request for total and immediate healing, even from our most heartfelt prayer. Christianity is based on the belief that Jesus rose from the dead. And we read about the miracle of Lazarus coming forth from the tomb, but it can sometimes feel wrong to just glibly put in a request for such a miracle ourselves or, or to imply to a struggling family that such an outcome is in the works if we only summon enough faith, if God can only be persuaded. 
Ultimately, it's not a very flattering description of God, is it? Because from this model, it can seem that God needs heavy persuasion, the right techniques, the right entrance to get an intervention or the alleviation of pain. If we don't go for a prayer of resurrection, Samuel Well says, we, we tend to go for a prayer of incarnation. It's a little less demanding in its insistence that we get a particular outcome. In our struggle, remembering that Jesus himself felt desolation and brokenness and pain and that he had to face death and its inevitability head on. We name all this as part of the human experience and we ask God to help us get through it. Sometimes our bodies are feeble. They let us down. Accidents happen. We don't get guarantees or entitlements when we're born. Life may just not be very easy or happy for some of us. And so we offer this prayer of incarnation, which says, God, through the life of Jesus, you shared our pain, our struggle, our sheer bad luck, our circumstances with all the needs and challenges and limits. And so we ask, be with, be with our friend, Oscar or Dave. Give him patience to endure what lies ahead. Give him peace on days that challenge and surround him with those who love him. And in these prayers of resurrection, we're asking God to do the work. In the prayers of incarnation, we step more into the scenario ourselves. If we want our friend to be surrounded by people who love him or her, we, we are at least implicitly offering to bring that love ourselves. When we've been asked to pray for somebody, we're being asked to offer our empathy, our heart, our care, to become part of this wide network of healing concern in the world. When people ask for prayer for a family member, a friend, part of what they're asking for is an affirmation, a reassurance that they are not alone in their pain, that they are part of something bigger that can carry them. And most of them are very willing, most of us are very willing to offer that even though we feel pretty helpless at times to fix the problem through our words or actions. There's nothing wrong with either of these kinds of prayers, these prayers of resurrection, these prayers of incarnation, because we have to listen to the voice of the spirit within us as it speaks and as it wants to be expressed. We reach out to God as we know how to reach out. And so we always pray from our hearts, trusting that God has more love for this friend, this family member, than even we ourselves have. There's no magic to it, simply a heartfelt desire to bring God's light into a frightening and painful circumstances. But there might be an additional way to pray that we'd like to consider when the situation is overwhelming, when somebody is in great distress. And that would be what I'd call a prayer of transfiguration. And that prayer brings to mind that experience you may remember from the Gospels. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, it's in Luke. And what happens is Jesus goes up the mountain in the presence of his disciples. He goes up this mountain, and suddenly, right before their eyes, the situation becomes full of light and radiance, a strength, a glory, as the Gospels put it, becomes visible. They see a reality about Jesus and about themselves, something about the being and state of the world and God's presence that had been invisible to them just seconds earlier. And so a prayer of transfiguration might go something like this. God, in the transfiguration of Jesus, we could recognize a whole reality within and beneath and beyond what we thought we knew. Show us more of you. Come close enough that we might find and discern a deeper truth in this situation than we can know or recognize now. Help our friend Oscar discover reasons for living, ways of being even in this pain beyond what he had imagined. Allow him to be folded into your grace like never before. This is a way, I think, of asking God 
to come even closer to us. It asks that we might come closer to God in a time of crisis than we might ever experience in normal times when we're preoccupied with our own agendas and assumptions. A prayer of transfiguration names that the goodness of God is something to be experienced to be sure in the day to day, but that it's never contained or limited only to what we know in the day to day. This way of holding someone in prayer remembers that there is a goodness, a beautiful truth that comes in the mystery of moments, even when we are in the shadow of death and smack in the reality of the limits that we face there. When we are in situations that are beyond ourselves and times when we can ask God to make us alive in ways that we have not known before, alive beyond the power of the body, perhaps, alive beyond the consciousness of mind, alive because suddenly we find ourselves held and even lifted by the very arms of God, the source of all life. We cease to be disconnected and in fact, we start becoming one with this benevolence in the universe beyond ourselves. There is a different way to trust and certainly for many of us, a different way to pray in times when the presence of tragedy threatens to cut us off from what we most need. And this kind of prayer acknowledges what we all know about life. It's in many ways and in times in many chapters, a mystery beyond our ability to understand, let alone control. The prayer of transfiguration helps us remember that God's goodness is far greater than our own and that we can ask for what we need, which is the trust to let God be God, and the openness to receive God's presence even through pain, to have the confidence to rest in the awareness that we are never alone, and even in our confusion and struggle. And so we become open to this power of the spirit that takes us beyond the boundaries of the body, and we rest in that love which is there at the heart of all life. Amen.
Good morning, First Congo. I'm going to talk to y'all about how God is still speaking with the painting I've been working on for a season of creation. So when I paint, I always begin with the dark values, laying down the shapes and areas where the shadow will appear three-dimensional. Next, um, laying down the light values on top of the dark values. This beautiful relationship of both the light and the dark instantly makes the image three-dimensional. That's why it's my favorite part. It's a part where you feel you create something out of nothing and the image comes to life. I've learned my lesson many times trying to begin first with the light values because it's always the feel good part, but it never works. Why you ask? Because there's no contrast. We need contrast from the dark values to establish the depth in the light values. The light is just as important as the dark and vice versa. God speaks to me through my process of painting the dark and the light in my paintings, whether big or small, it's always about contrast. We wouldn't know why, we wouldn't know what joy, love, or happiness was without sad or bad feelings. They give us perspective. So whenever you feel down, remember God will paint the light values for you very soon. And this is how this is how I know God is still speaking. Think about this during the week and listen to how God is still speaking to you. Be well. Good morning. I'm feeling there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And it's the spirit of the Lord. It's in the service. It's in this. Thank you for everybody who already set the mat for worship. Everything that we've experienced this morning has been calming for my spirit, and I pray for yours. Let us affirm that we are here together, no matter how many different spaces we're occupying with our affirmation of community. We will be together. We will stand as brothers and sisters given life by one God. We will be together. We will watch out for one another. We will listen to what needs to be said in the spirit of compassion. We will respect the power of silence. We will wait for the slowest. We will sooner or later catch up with the fastest. We will dry the tears of those who are weeping and know that they will dry ours when the time comes. We will let ourselves begin to feel at least a little of the pain of those we have considered our enemies. We will entrust our stories to each other. We will not be skeptical that peace can come. We will not forget the joy of life. We will not forget to be grateful. We will do our best to stir in each other hope, courage, and faith. Now will you pray with me this morning? Good morning, almighty God. Few, if any of us can truly say we're feeling Tony the Tiger great. At the same time, all of us have so much for which to be grateful, whatever our situation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If we ever had any doubt about the waves of woe recorded in the Old Testament, we have come to understand them even better in 2020. We are bombarded with statistics, remedies, and preventive protocols about a disease that has swept this earth and now building seasonal momentum to make rounds again. The economic devastation left in its path has left the rich richer, the poor poorer, and the masses in the middle hanging on to memories more than money. The impact of peaceful protests against systemic racial and ethnic abuses have poured into our living spaces, workplaces, neighborhoods, all levels of education centers, preschool to senior citizens classes, 
healthcare resources, worship houses, personal dwellings, family and friend circles, even our hearts. In the USA, we are on pause this weekend between the national conventions of our two major political parties. The anticipation of conflict and even violence surrounding our election processes in all states and territories seems absolutely terrifying. But, but we're not afraid. We are not afraid because we have a congregation to model. Just like individuals, groups, and other institutions, congregations have role models and personalities with desirable and undesirable traits. Oh God, we praise you for the written story of the Church of Thessalonia. We believe we too are engaged in the work of faith, the labor of love, and the steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ to ground us, to center us, to encourage us for times like these. We praise you for the depth of our calling and the demonstration of it in all our non-traditional ministries that flourished through the years. We have stretched ourselves to become followers of Jesus Christ we have triumphed through tough times at First Congo. We pray for more spiritual opportunities to serve in this season of multiple pandemics. We are affirming that we still carry the power of Jesus to change minds, hearts, and lives as we serve. Amen, amen, and amen. In our community of faith, there's so many needs that we're going to lift up. But God, we thank you that school openings have been no more traumatic with the you're on your own plans across our state, in our region, and in our nation. We pray earnestly for all children everywhere that their childhood would last through their childhood. We hold that prayer for families with children facing evictions. We remember families with special needs children in the home or housed somewhere else during the unavoidable separations. With prayers, we cover the fear and terrors of Lebanon's children facing a surge in coronavirus infections after the deadly explosion, leaving 100,000 children without homes. We offer prayers of comfort for the Barley family, living with the loss of our plumber, Kevin, and his three-year-old grandson, young Kevin, to childhood cancer. We thank you for comforting May Yancey and her family during their Texas pilgrimage and commemoration gathering for her late grandson, Stephanie Green's son. Lisa Gaddy's oldest son, Lance, and his girlfriend, Jayla, presented flu-like symptoms that were recently diagnosed as COVID-19. So we ask that you keep Lisa and Sarah and their families in your care. Ben and Naomi Klepper Smith, Jen Logan's cousins, still need COVID-19 healing prayers. The former wife of Bob Reese was in hospice recently, but able to be discharged. We lift them for your healing. Lindley Smith, Lindley Schmidt and her medical providers are exploring a new medical regime for her improved health. We give thanks for medical service and art. Joe Pfeiffer is moving through his cancer with your blessings and our prayers. 
And now in your personal silence, please share it with a little prayer or thought for those to hope, have good health and heal. In our country, we need hope, health and healing. God, we give thanks for the gift of a relationship with you. With you through spoken and unspoken prayers. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. Let us now recite the covenant prayer together. 
We covenant with the Lord and one with another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in all his ways, according as he is pleased to reveal himself unto us in his blessed word of truth. I found myself going, I'm stumbling over words this morning. And um, I hope Lindley's not going through a regime, although when you're in medical care, sometimes those processes feel like regime. But that's kind of where we are. We're stumbling through this process called staying calm, staying masked, sometimes staying muted. <laughs> Go forth this week, giving yourself grace, knowing that God has already done that. It's a different time. We're not in control. So whether you fumble over words or fumble over feelings, be blessed. And the blessing of God Almighty, Jesus, our brother, and the Holy Spirit, our strength, be with us all and abide with us all always. Amen. Please join in our final hymn, Faith Begins by Let It Go. Hello, everyone. Yeah, Hello, everybody. Hello. Hey, Ryan. Ron, hey, you, were so, Ron you were so confident today. You did such a good job, buddy. Hey. Well Hi. Done, How are all you feeling? Hi, Pastor. Hey, Mom. Hi. 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 You look wonderful. Hi. All right. Good job, Laurie. I hope you don't have the virus. Great job, everyone. All right. Bye bye. We're out. Bye, darling. Thanks for sharing, Naomi. Bye, Naomi. Bye.
Hello. Goodbye. Come back hey, for Virginia. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Good job. Yeah. Uh, Catherine, do you great. Uh, thank you. Y'all singing was wonderful, oh. by the way. Oh, wow. Well. Thank you. Yeah, great, Tony. Really fabulous. Thanks, Ron. Hi, Pamela. Hello. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Pamela has a good background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Katie. Oh. Hi. Hey, Katie. Hi, everybody. Hi, Janet. Hi. Rita, that's a beautiful hey, butterfly. Hi. How gorgeous. Hey, Barb. Hi, Sarah. Hi. There she is. Hey, Ginny May, my favorite. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Virginia. Thank you for the Thank prayer, Sonia. Hi, Dad. I have a prayer. There she is. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Hi. Virginia. Hey, Virginia. Hey, Virginia. Hi. Hey, Hi, like you too, Mario. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, Catherine. Hey, hey, hey John. Hi, you are. Hi, Virginia. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Keith hey, Norman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Virginia, you're growing up. Isn't she? Right. <laughs> you right. are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Right. Ron, you did a beautiful job. Yes. Yes. Really it's nice, Ron. Love it. Can't wait to see it up. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's going to be up, what, in two or three weeks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ron, I thought you were on the road. I miss Bam so I Don't forget, speed dial. Speed dial. Tell, tell Cheryl why you ha I have to be on speed dial for you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> on the clock. <laughs> I think Sonia may need to be on everyone's speed dial. Oh, I know. <laughs> Say hi to Bryant. Hi, Bryant. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. 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 You guys, I you, see Brian. you guys sounded yeah, so good you. today. All of y'all, just everybody just sounded uh -huh. so good today. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Good to see you. Hey, Chuck. Hey. Good to see everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Hey, Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. I'm Margaret Schneider. Julia. It was, Margaret. it was good to be with you this morning. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. Hey, Paul and Cynthia, hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Y'all sounded so good today, Julia and Catherine. Y'all were just oh, good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Really good. It, was, it was lovely, lovely. Yeah. See, some of you Thursday. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Be well. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye, y'all. All right. Bye, Pamela. Bye. 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 Bye, Kathy. Bye, everybody. Bye. Good to Bye. see you. Everybody. Bye. Good to see you. You, you just do so great. Bye, Ron. Work. Really love it. Ron, you were wonderful. Yeah, it's great. That was very uh, confident. Really yeah. good. Very well done. That's going to yes. be beautiful artwork when he puts that up. Oh, it's amazing already! Nice. Yeah, wow. yeah. It's on the uh, Instagram. It looks good on online already. It's very nice. Oh, oh, it's online. Oh, I, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Cool. Hey, all Dennis. Right. Dennis, thank you for coordinating all this stuff with the videos. Yeah, it's been very great. nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> really, worked well yeah. really worked well today. Really worked well today. Oh, thank y'all for working so hard on it and making it. It's getting better every week. It is. Oh, yeah. Every week, it's getting better. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're transfigured. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> At the last minute, Tony told me he would take over the putting the words on the screen, you know, spot. Yeah, yeah. We like it. Oh, my, my blood pressure just went down. <laughs> oh, I'm uh, so glad. Prayer is answered in many ways, isn't it? Yes. You got That's it. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Digital prayers. All right, you guys, <laughs> sign us off. Love y'all. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.